Well, I'm going to start off, I'm going to just describe what we're going to be covering and uh, when it comes to live sound, the most important aspect is acoustics. That's what differs live sound from recording sound because um, in the recording studio, the acoustics are set. You can't really change them. You can move walls around a little bit, but acoustics are the biggest factor. Uh, it's also a factor involved in feedback. Um, which is probably the second biggest factor in live sound, which is something that when you're in a recording studio or working in a television truck, feedback is never an issue. It just doesn't occur at all. Um, so these are the first several areas we'll be covering uh, pretty much in this order. Um, we'll be describing microphones. Um, we'll get our hands on s many different mixers. They have um, several 56 channel mixers, probably a half a dozen, and a couple digital mixers, and everything in between from the little Mackie, the first Mackie they ever made, to all kinds of things. We'll actually be able to get our hands on those and uh, figure, that, figure each one of them out. Uh, the outboard gear refers to compressors, gates, limiters, um, and all that stuff that's on the side <laughs> that you that your signal runs through. And then after we get a general knowledge of all the other equipment, we'll start putting the pieces together. We'll start setting up a sound system and then actually tuning a sound system, which means getting your hands on the EQ, figuring out what sounds good, what doesn't sound good, and how to make adjustments for that. We'll also uh, operate a system, meaning mixing. Towards the end, depending on how quick we get through the book, we might have a lot of time on our hands. Maybe we can get some actual instruments in here, some podiums in here, learn how to EQ a podium mic, learn how to EQ a drum kit, and, uh, and things like that. It all depends on what you guys want and how eager you are as to how far we can take this in 16 weeks. Uh, troubleshooting. I don't hear anything. Why not? We'll go over that as well. And buzzes. If you've ever heard a buzz in a system, and, you know, if you ever set up a little sound system and something's buzzing, we'll touch that as well. And safety. As I mentioned, the last line in that, you know, there's a lot of equipment involved. Live sound is normally a temporary venture where the equipment goes in and out every day. And so uh, that's something we have to be aware of is the safety. And this is a little bit about me. Um, I'm that skinny kid on the left when I was 16 years old. Um, this is how I started. And uh, I don't know if you noticed my microphone, but uh, it's actually a headphone that was broken. <laughs> it actually even has a volume control on it. And I, I put it on a broken uh, cymbal stand, and that was my first microphone. And I plugged it right into my bass rig. Um, I grew up, uh, didn't have a lot of money, and, but I had a ton of ambition. And... Uh, Somehow, we can get this to change. Uh, let me go back into this mode. And uh, my first, the first tour that I ever did, I did uh, touring sound, uh, 1988 and 87, was with a band called Squeeze. I did uh, their US and Canada tour. And uh, this is one of the Squeeze setups and this was in Daytona Beach, Florida um, during one of the spring breaks back in 88. And uh, this one isn't as easy to see, but uh, this is a place called Red Rocks in Colorado. Um, this was with uh, Jethro Tull. And this is probably either the first or second most beautiful venue in the country. And uh, this is uh, another MTV spring break. Uh, this is Spinal Tap. <laughs> and this was, uh, this was a a video shoot. Um, so they came to this, they came to our location, you know, several hours during the day, maybe six hours during the day, they would come back and forth to our location and we do live concerts and interviews and things like that. Um, this is a place called Jones Beach in uh, New, York's, New York State on Long Island. This is a band called Erasure. They had a, they had a killer uh, set. As you can see, they have blow up mushrooms and, and grape leaves hanging from the floor. It was very fun. And you can faintly see 
the PA system, we had a ground stack with all the subwoofers, and then we flew a couple speakers up here. Because where I'm standing, where I took the picture, is the top row of the audience. So you can see how high the audience was compared to the rest of it. And so we had some of these speakers pointing up towards the top row and, and all this on the bottom. And uh, I've also done some political work. I did uh, work with uh, President Clinton on both his uh, 92 and 96 campaign where we put a portable sound system underneath his bus and uh, we would just run the cables out. The buses would stop and within three minutes we had the sound going and then the president would stop anywhere he felt like it literally and uh, we'd set up a couple speakers. We had four speakers uh, and uh, we just ran through the podium mics. We actually, the podium mics actually went to the Secret Service, uh, White House communication, and then to me into the, the little bay of the bus. And I, I just love this picture. Uh, this was the C Toronto Sky Dome, a band called Jesus and Mary Chain. Um, I don't even know if they still exist. Um, and then after I was touring, I uh, left live sound touring a couple years ago and got into television. Uh, a lot of my work in television is in sports. And uh, this is a typical truck, the audio room in a typical truck. And uh, this is the outside of a typical television truck. This was here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. I did a bunch of work for MTV doing live concerts. I also did some work with the Discovery Channel. We would had a Shark Week uh, live show where we filmed it on the Bikini Island. Uh, this is where they did all the nuclear testing. Uh, and this was some of the mess that we got ourselves into. We had, uh, this was on one of the boats. It was 22 miles out that we microwaved the signals back to the, uh, to the site. And, uh, and this was another boat uh, that was about five miles out that we microwaved the signals back. And then this is the island where we, uh, the microwave tower, where we microwave receivers came down. We used fiber optic cable for the, all the audio signals to come down to the compound where I had the studio. And of course, we live glamorously. Um, this was uh, my setup here is my point of view for the several weeks. It took 21 days to set up for a two hour live show. And uh, this is me after definitely not enough sleep. And, uh, and through that, uh, Live Sound International published an article. Um, they were kind enough to take a couple hours and interview me and uh, give me put me in their magazine. Um, also done some uh, work with surgeries. Uh, Discovery Health took me down to Santa Domingo where we did some live surgeries. And uh, this is me wiring up the doctor. He's got a wireless microphone headset and, an, and an, what they call an IFB, an interruptible foldback or in-ear monitor um, so he could hear uh, the production crew talk to him. And this is our uh, portable studio. As you can see, everything's in a case that just opens up and closes. Because originally it was supposed to be in Ecuador. We were supposed to do it in the jungle, but there was a coup and, a, and an earthquake uh, the week we came. So, so we moved it to Santa Domingo. And uh, we were just literally set up in the hallway. And just in that door in the back is the, is the surgeries there. And this is uh, my little Mackie mixer board all wired up and ready to go. And I just had to throw this in because this is a typical telephone pole in Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. I don't know, I don't know. I just thought you'd like to see that. Um, yeah. So, life as an audio engineer for me has been very, very good. And uh, I'd like to know a little bit uh, what you guys would like to get out of this class and uh, what experience you've had and what you'd like to get out of it. And if you want, let's just start over here.